Good morning. Good morning. This is Wednesday, a day that the Lord has given to us, a beautiful day that the Lord has done, that we may be able to be grateful and be thankful to Him. This is a special day, Wednesday, a day that we also offer ourselves to seek the Lord, even in corporate prayers. And we thank God for the far He has carried us. For the last uh, about uh, 10 months, the Lord has been faithful that we have been continued to keep the Wednesdays uh, holy days that we seek the face of God, days that not only in individual way, but corporately we are able to gather, uh, thank God, seek His face, and are able to pray in unity and in uh, one spirit. And we want to encourage us that we be continue to carry with this important culture, the culture of prayer, the culture of thanksgiving, and the culture of fasting. And I want to encourage us by God's grace. May the Lord help us. And even as we offer ourselves this day for prayer, and as we offer ourselves to pray, that the Holy Spirit of God will continue to reveal to us the secrets of the kingdom, the secrets that he can only give, the issues of understanding and the spirit of, uh, of being able to be revealed to the sacred things of God, that we may also pray in line with his will, and that not with his standing, but we can discern his perfect will about situations, about uh, circumstances, and about the things that we desire. It is also important at this particular time that we ask the Lord even to quicken our minds and understanding about the expectation he has with us, that we may be able also to understand our calling and our ministry, that we may not serve amiss, but we be able to serve in accordance to the purpose and in the will of God. And therefore, let us pray as we consecrate ourselves for this important day, even as we pick the word of God this day. Our Father and our God, we are grateful. We thank you so much for the great opportunity to come and to present ourselves in your presence. We know this is a great and a marvelous privilege that you have offered to us. The Lord, we can commune with you even through prayer. Today, we consecrate ourselves to you with the power of the blood of Jesus. We set our day and our times to you. The Lord, you may find fellowship with us. As we seek you, may we find you. As we call, Heavenly Father, answer our prayers. As we also knock doors, may you open them by your divine grace. And as we continue, dear Lord, even to seek you more and more, may we find you in whatever thing that we, we desire. And our Lord Jesus, have your way and empower us with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Grant us the spirit of prayer and supplication that we may not struggle even to seek your pace in prayer, but we may find an open heaven. And bless us indeed in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, brethren, it has been a two good days that we have been able to continue to uh, learn about the power of a grateful heart, the power of, of thanksgiving. And we have been able to go through them. And today I want us to pick some two more, even as we seek the Lord in prayer today, even in this time of prayer and fasting, we need to pick it up with thanksgiving, even in God's presence. With thanksgiving. Because it's true, even finding the favor and the opportunity to be in God's presence, it is such a wonderful thing. There is no one who appeared before God and he was, and he remained the same. Amazingly, when always we appear before God with a very deliberate mind about going to him, our lives can never remain the same. And for that reason, it is an amazing, amazing time of inspiration time of God's visitation and a time of God's finding fellowship with us. And I want us to pick that there is also power, the power to be able to find contentment. Now, gratitude brings the grace of contentment that defeats the spirit of envy and greed. It is such a powerful thing that when we carry and accept a grateful heart, when we are able to make thanksgiving as a, as a lifestyle and our way of our lives as worship to God, we are able to receive the power and the grace to be contented. You know, one of the challenges that we have in the human nature is not lacking a spirit of contentment. You know, a human, humanry and in human terms, it's good to say that you have ever seen even kids when they are young, 
that when they have uh, they have toys and they have visitors who come and you know, small kids like them come and they are happy that they have been visited, but they are, they have an attendance of coming with all the toys that they have been bought by their parents. And then amazing what they do when they start praying with them and they see their visitors start also praying with those toys, they always feel as if the other toy with the other with the other with the other kid is better than what he has. So they keep going taking the ones that we have other people. Amazingly, they are never contented with what they have. And at the end of the day, you realize they pick all those toys from their friends and they hoard them. That is the nature of the human, of the human being. Loving and wanting what other people have more than what they have. And therefore they become even greedy. They even want that which other people have to keep for themselves. And by the way, that is the challenge you have in our country, Kenya. What is the spirit of corruption? The spirit of corruption is lack of contentment. It is a spirit of greed. People are never com comfortable and content with what they have. They want more and more to amass more. And therefore they can even kill, take away even from the poor and the widows. Amazingly, you can't believe it, that people can even steal money that is helping orphans. And even others, men, money meant for medication, for people dying, even with kind, kind of, a, of, a, of, a, of a destructive uh, disease like, uh, like COVID, just that they may be able to find more because they believe they can never be comfortable with what they have. And therefore, it is important by God's grace to learn that when we carry a thankful heart, what happens is like God gives us the power and the grace of contentment. Do you listen to what um, Timothy says in the book of Timothy chapter uh, 6 and verses uh, 6 to 8. He says, yet true godliness with contentment itself is great wealth. After long, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. You know, one of the things that Timothy is saying is being told by, 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 by Paul which is amazing. And as he's teaching this young man, Timothy, he is telling him about the end. Remember, he is telling him that, remember, you came with nothing. And with nothing, you leave this world. And I, and I believe that is the most defeating truth about this life we carry. I've seen people go. I've seen people that have it. Knowledge. Power money, relations, name it, influence. But when they go, it's so amazing that the way a poor pauper goes is how a billionaire go. The way, by the way, the craziest person, even the people that we may be able to say that they never even acknowledge God in their lives, the way they go, by the way, about the human things is the way the church go. The only thing that matters is about the relationship, the relationship they created with God. But about the material wealth that sometimes causes us out of worry, we came with nothing, with nothing we will go. And for that truth that Paul is talking to Timothy, he is telling him, now this is the wisdom. Having understood our ultimate end, then we should always remember that the greatest godliness and religion call it it is about being contented with what we have and i want to remind us that when we become thankful about whatever god puts in our hands he is able to breathe in our spirits and our hearts a spirit of contentment by the way contentment is great wealth contentment it is a marvelous wonderful thing that you cannot have a sleepless night because you found and saw your, your neighbor with a new house, a new car, a new dress, a new shoe, or even a new thing. You can never go and lack sleep just because you found that your brother or your sister or your friend have received a new blessing. Why? Because you are able to be contented with what you have. And for that reason, I want to encourage us, by God's grace, may we... Find the spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving. It will always grieve to us and breathe to us a spirit and the gift of contentment. 
allow me also to push it further before I say the last thing. In the book of Psalms, verses 38, Psalms 38 and verses 1, Psalms 38, uh, 138, sorry, Psalms 138 and verses 1, this is what the Bible says, says I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart, I will sing you praises before God. In other words, it's like if there is anything that we need to offer to God, it is thanksgiving with all our hearts and with all what we have. Because when we do that, in return, we receive a spirit and the grace and the power of contentment. Lastly, I want to talk about that a spirit and a heart of gratitude leads us to joy and we are able to appreciate our present days and appreciate what we already, who we are already, uh, who we are already. Now, I, I want to remind us that uh, it is important to know that a thankful spirit is always joyful. Now, in the, you remember the, the psalmist saying, and I had quoted when we started on Monday, that the psalmist says that God dwells in the praises of his people. It's also good to know that David says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Therefore, when we give thanks to God and we become grateful and thankful people, God's presence comes to be with us. When the presence of God is with us, we are able to find perfect joy. Remember, I'm using the word perfect joy. And when we find that perfect joy that can only be given by God, what happens in our lives is that we are able, we are able to appreciate who we are and what we have at the present. You know why people are never joyful? It's because their eyes are always on what they want to become, but not what they have already become. You know why we worry? It's because we of what is coming tomorrow or what we are going to eat tomorrow, but already we are not thankful and careful about what we have already eaten. You know why we worry is about how we're going to pay that debt or that bill at the end of the month, but we forget to thank God for the bills we have paid for the last few months. You know what? As I come to an end, I'll just remind us if we have to have true joy, if by any means we have to find true joy, true joy can only be found when we are able to be thankful and the presence of God is with us because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Just remember these, um, just listen to this psalm, a psalm, 126 verses 1 to 3. It says, When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, What an amazing thing that the Lord has done for them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What a joy. Amazingly, we must also remember, for us to remain to be joyful, we are able to remember and these who are remembering is a song of remembrance of God, what God had done for the Israelites. We have so much that the Lord has done for us. And through what God has done for us, we can be able to live joyful lives. And when we become joyful and thankful, we are able by God's grace to also find by His, uh, by His grace to overcome uh, the spirit of uh, complaints and mama. And we are able to understand who we are. And therefore, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, that as we continue to receive the power that comes with the grace of gratitude. May the Lord cause a spirit of thanksgiving in our lives, that when we become thankful, we are able by God's, by God's grace to glorify Him. We are also able to find our spiritual eyes opened to the giver, but not only to the gift. When we become joyful, grateful and thankful, we align ourselves in the perfect will of God. When we become grateful and carry a spirit of gratitude, we are able to find peace that surpasses every human understanding and we are able to defy the lies of Satan. When we carry a spirit of gratitude and we live a life of thanksgiving, we are able to find contentment of our lives and we are able to accept our status wherever we are in the present. And lastly, when we become men and women of thanksgiving, we are able to find joy and perfect joy that is able to give us the, the fulfillment of accepting what the Lord has done in our lives. May the Lord cause that grace of joy among us. 
even as we continue to love him and to serve you and carry even gratitude as part and parcel of our lives. Father, we thank you so much because of the many things you have done for us. As we continue practically to thank you by words, by actions, by our gifts, and by worship, and by doing whatever we are doing in our places of work, in our businesses, in our careers, as they become a platform of thanksgiving to you, we pray that, Lord Jesus, we may be able to find the benefits and the power that goes with thanksgiving. Bless us this day. Bless our lives. Continue to uh, meet us at the point of our needs. Defeat the forces of evil on our behalf. And above all, may we find your presence in whatever thing we do. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.